Hello, my name is Charles Gardner. I'm the executive director of INCO. INCO is a nonprofit organization with 37 member organizations around the world. And we support the rights of 98 million adult ex-smokers who use safer nicotine alternatives in order to avoid toxic forms of tobacco. I'm a developmental neurobiologist by training. That means I studied how the brain develops. And I've spent 30 years of my career working in global health as a senior advisor to the World Health Organization, as an associate director at the Rockefeller Foundation, 10 years as a senior staff person in the US Department of Health and Human Services, including five years as a the health attache, as a diplomat in India. And so I have something to say about these issues, uh, speaking directly to the question of whether nicotine is harmful to developing brains. Now, the, the reason I'm talking about this is because I, my understanding is that there is a proposal in Norway, in your country, to raise the legal age for vaping to 25, while keeping the legal age for cigarettes at 18. That's, that's something that I, I think nobody's going to understand, but the only rationale for this arbitrary age of 25 is an argument that has been made increasingly since the advent and the creation of, of e-cigarettes, so it goes back about 10 years, that nicotine harms developing brains. So let's address that. First of all, when I was getting my PhD, it was well understood that the brain stops developing at the age of 18, not 25. Somehow that's changed. But the fact is the brain never stops developing. Even when you're 80 years old, it's still developing. There's no arbitrary point or cutoff where it just stops. So somehow infantilizing young adults by saying that their brains are still developing up to the age of 25 has entered into the discourse in neurobiology after my time. That's fine. I'm okay with that. But the problem here is this. The argument or the claim that nicotine harms developing brains has absolutely zero, no human evidence to back it up. And, and in fact, it has plenty of human evidence to the contrary. So for example, in the United States, it's probably similar in your country. One out of every three adults living today is either a current or a former smoker, and almost all of them started smoking in their teens. There is no evidence. There's an absence of evidence that one out of three, that would be 89 million American adults, have brain harms. They don't. Or we can go back to the 1940s when nearly 60% of American men smoked. There has been no decline in brain harms um, between 1940 and today when only 14% of American men smoke. Now, the only remotely relevant studies have looked at human twins who smoked who were teen, when they were in their teens. And these studies have found that they had no difference in their school achievement, no difference in their academic scores or their grades. So where does this claim come from? It comes from studies in young rats. Okay, so the studies have found that a very high level of nicotine in young rats causes changes. Now changes are not necessarily harms, changes in the rat brain somehow. This finding, and I'm gonna use hand gestures here, this finding of changes has morphed into harms in rats, has morphed into human harms, has morphed into the, an argument that nicotine is a brain toxin, all with no intervening 
evidence. Just an echo chamber of people saying that nicotine must be harmful. And let's go back to those poor young rats. It turns out the changes in rat brains are very comparable to the changes in young rats given caffeine. It's about the same. Further, with nicotine, unlike caffeine, the changes are reversible. So if you put this rat as it's aging into a cage with, a, with an exercise wheel, the changes reverse and they go back to as if the rat had never seen nicotine. This is very similar to studies that, that looked at um, rats and heroin or rats and cocaine. If you put them in an isolated steel cage and give them a lever to press, they'll press it to get those drugs. But if you put them in a larger cage with 15 other rats, males and females, and the same lever to get the drug, they'll groom each other, they'll eat, they'll feed, they'll occasionally press the lever. Not so much. A lot of what we understand or think we understand about rats and heroin, cocaine, nicotine, caffeine comes from extremely um, artificial environments. It's a bit like, you know, watching a praying mantis will bite the head off of her mate after, after mating, but in nature that almost never happens. It only happens if you stick the praying mantises in a glass jar and watch them. There is no human evidence that nicotine harms developing brains. There's overwhelming evidence that it does not. And thank you for your time.